El Kaf, the place of refuge. With the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. All type of true and perfect praise belongs to Allah who has revealed this perfect book to his servant and has not assigned to it any crookedness. He has made it rightly directing that it may warn the disbelievers of a severe calamity coming from him and that it may give good tidings to the believers who do deeds of righteousness that there awaits them a place of goodly reward wherein they shall stay for ever and that it may warn those who say allah has begotten a son this is absolutely wrong they have no real knowledge of him nor had their fathers grievous is the word that comes out of their mouths they speak naught but a lie will you worry yourself to death sorrowing after them if they do not believe in this great discourse verily we have made all that is on the earth as an embellishment for it that we may try them as to which of them is the most excellent in respect of performing the noblest deeds yet it is we who shall one day reduce all that is on it to a barren soil do you think that the people of the place of refuge and of the inscriptions were a wonder among our signs recall the time when the young men betook themselves to the place of refuge and said in prayer our lord grant us mercy from yourself and provide us right course in our affair setting all things right for us so we sealed up their ears to cut them off from the outside world in their place of refuge for only a number of years then we raised them up for making certain efforts that we might distinguish as to which of the two groups had made better use of the time they had stayed there according to its rightful requirement we relate to you their true story they were a few young men who believed in their lord and whom we had led from guidance to guidance and we strengthened their hearts when they stood up in the cause of god and said our lord is the lord of the heavens and the earth never shall we call upon any god apart from him for in that case we would certainly be uttering a preposterous thing far from the truth these people of ours have taken to them for worship other gods apart from him why do they not bring any clear proof and authority in support of their belief in fact they have no such proof who can be more unjust than the person who forges a lie against allah they said one to another so now when you have left them and that which they worship apart from allah you should take shelter in the place of refuge if you do so your lord will extend to you his mercy and will provide some ease for you in this affair of yours and o oh people you could see the sun when it rose inclining to the right of their spacious place of refuge and when it set declining to their left while they were in the open space of this refuge of theirs this was one of the signs of allah he alone is rightly guided whom allah guides as for the person whom he forsakes you will find no helper nor guide for him you might think them weary while they are dormant and asleep we shall make them turn over now to the right and then to the left while their dog is present with them stretching its paws forward on the threshold in the courtyard if you had become aware of their true state you would have turned back from them in fright and you would have surely been filled with great awe of them and just as we made them dormant we raised them to life from the state of lethargy so that they questioned one another one of them asked how long have you remained dormant some of them said we have remained in this state of inactivity a day or a part of a day others said only your lord knows best 
the time you have remained so. Now send one of you with these silver coins of yours to the city. He should see which of its inhabitants has the best and purest food, and let him bring for you provisions from it. And let him be courteous, and let him not at all apprise anyone about you. For if they come to know of you, they will condemn you, or make you revert to their faith by force. And in that case, that you revert to their faith, you will never attain your goal and prosper ever. That is how we let other people know about them, their intentions and the real state of their affairs, that people might know that the promise of Allah is true, and that as to the coming of the promised hour, there is no doubt about it. And recall the time when the people that followed argued among themselves about their affairs, and they said, Build a monument over them. Their Lord knows them best. Those of them who won their point said, We will certainly build a mosque over them. Guessing at random about them, some said, They were three, their dog being the fourth. While others say, They were five, and their dog being the sixth. Yet there are others who say, They were seven, and their dog being the eighth. Say, my Lord knows best their real number. None knows them except a few. So do not argue about them, save with arguing on known premise, which is overpowering and seek no legal order concerning them from any one of them, from those who make random guesses. And never say of anything, I am going to do it tomorrow, unless you add to it God willing. And remember your Lord whenever you forget, and make a mistake, and say, I hope my Lord will guide me to a course even shorter than this to the right path, leading to success. And they, the early Christians, stayed in this place of refuge three hundred years, and extended their stay another nine years. Say, Allah knows best how long they stayed. To him belong the hidden realities in the heavens and the earth. How clear he sees and how well he hears. They have no helper beside him. He lets none associate with him and share his judgment. And recite to these people what is revealed to you of the commandment of your Lord. There is none who can change his words, and you will find no refuge apart from him. And keep yourself attached to those who call upon their Lord morning and evening, constantly seeking his pleasure. And do not let your eyes turn away from them to pursue the glamour of the present life, and do not follow him whose heart we have declared unmindful of our remembrance, who follows his evil inclinations, and whose affair exceeds all legitimate limits. And say, it is the truth from your Lord. Therefore, let him who wishes it believe in it, and let him who wishes otherwise disbelieve in it. But let everyone remember, we have prepared for the unjust a fire whose flaming enclosure will surround and fumes envelop them. If they cry for water, they shall be helped with water, boiling like molten lead which will scald their faces. How dreadful the drink, and how dismal is the fire as a resting place! But those who believe and do deeds of righteousness should know that we certainly do not suffer the reward of those who do good deeds to be lost. It is these for whom there await the gardens of eternity, served with running streams to keep them green and flourishing. There they shall be adorned with bracelets of gold, and wear green robes of fine silk and rich brocade. They will be reclining in these gardens upon raised couches. How excellent the reward, and how beautiful the resting place! And relate to these opponents of yours the parable and description of the conditions of two men. We had provided to one of them 
two vine gardens which we fenced with date palms and we placed cornfields between the two each of the two gardens brought forth its fruit in abundance failing not the least in them and we had made a stream to flow as well in between the two thus he the owner had an abundance of fruit and substances of diverse kinds so he said to his companion the other man while he was arguing boastfully and vainly with him i am richer than you in wealth and mightier in respect of manpower and it so happened that he entered his garden while he was unjust to his own soul he said to his companion i do not think that this wealth will ever perish and i do not think that the promised hour of resurrection will ever come but if i am ever made to return to my lord i will certainly find there an even better resort than this his companion said to him while he was arguing with him do you disbelieve in him who created you first from dust and then from a sperm drop then he fashioned you into a perfect man but as for myself i believe that he allah alone is my lord and i will associate none with my lord and why did you not say when you entered your garden only that which allah wills comes to pass for power belongs only to allah though you see me inferior to yourself in riches and children there is every hope that my lord will give me a garden better than yours and he may visit this garden of yours with thunderbolts from above so that it is turned into a barren waste or its water may be drained into the earth so that you will not be able to find it now it came to pass that his fruit and substance was utterly destroyed and while it lay toppled over on its trellises he began to wring his hands on account of what he had spent on it and said would that i had associated none with my lord but then there was no party left to defend him against allah nor could he defend himself for it was allah alone who could help him at such a time it is thus established that protection belongs only to allah and help comes from him alone the true god he is the best in respect of rewarding and the best in respect of bringing about good results and give them the similitude of the life of this world it is like water which we send down from the clouds so the vegetation and plants of the earth flourish with it and then it turns into chaff which the winds scatter about behold allah is the holder of all power over what he will wealth and children are an adornment of the life of this world but with regard to immediate reward ever abiding righteous deeds are the best in the sight of your lord they also promise the best hope in respect of the future and beware of the day when we shall set the mountains in motion and make them vanish and you shall find the nations of the earth march forth against one another and we shall gather all peoples together and we shall leave none of them behind and they shall be presented before your lord ranged in rows and it will be said to them now certainly you have come to us no better than we created you the first time but you had thought that we would appoint for you no time for the fulfillment of our promise and on that day the record of their deeds will be exhibited before them and you will see those who cut off their ties with allah fearful as to that which is recorded in it they will say woe to us what sort of record is this it leaves out neither a small thing nor a great one but has recounted everything and they will find all that they did confronting them and your lord does injustice to no one ever and recall the time when we said to the angels submit to adam 
so they all submitted, bowing. But Iblis did not. He was one of the jinn. He disobeyed the command of his lord. People, would you then take him and his progeny, and cohorts, for friends, rather than me, while they are your enemies? How evil is the substitute the unjust have chosen! I did not call them to make them witness, and to help at the time of the creation of the heavens and the earth, nor at the time of their own creation. I would never take those who lead others astray for my helpers. And beware of the day when he will say, Call on my so-called partners about whom you had many pretensions. Thereupon they will call on them, but they will give them no answer, and we shall make their association with them a cause of their perdition. And those who cut off their ties with Allah will see the fire and realize that they are going to fall into it, and they shall find no way of escape from it. And we have explained in various ways in this Qur'an every kind of excellent thing for the good of the people. But of all things human being is the most contentious. Unless the precedents of the ancients should be repeated in their case, or the punishment should stare them in the face, there is nothing to hinder people from believing in the guidance when it comes to them, and from seeking protection and pardon from their Lord. And we send no apostles but as bearers of good tidings to the obedient on the one hand, and as warners to the disobedient on the other. And those who disbelieve contend by means of falsehood that they may refute the truth thereby. And they scoff at my commandments and the punishment of which they had been warned. And who is more unjust than he who is reminded of the messages of his Lord? But he turns away from them, and forgets what he has forwarded with his own hands to be stored. In fact, we have placed veils upon their hearts, which prevent them from understanding it, and in their ears is created heaviness, so that they have turned deaf. You call them to the right path as you may. They will never follow the right course and accept guidance. Your Lord is all-protecting, full of mercy. If he were to take them to task for all that they have done, he would certainly have hastened for them the punishment. Yet there is a time appointed for them. They will never find an escape from it. And these are townships of the people committed to punishment. We destroyed them when they committed inequities and wrong, and we appointed a fixed time for their destruction. And recall the time when Moses said to his sincere young comrade, I will not stop till I reach the confluence of the two rivers, the Niles at Khartoum, even if I must have to go on journeying for years. But when they reached the confluence where the two rivers met, they forgot all about their fish, which they had brought with them, so that it took its way straight into the river, burrowing into it. And when they had gone further, he said to his sincere young comrade, Bring us our breakfast. Indeed, the journey of today has been very tiring for us. He, the young comrade, replied, Did you see what happened when we betook ourselves to the rock for shelter? I forgot all about the fish, and none but Satan made me forget to mention this to you. And behold, it made its way into the river. What a wonder that I should thus forget! Moses said, That is the place which we have been seeking. So both of them returned, retracing their steps, so that they found a noble and great servant of ours, to whom we had granted mercy from us, and whom we had taught great knowledge from ourself. Moses said to him, May I follow you so that you may teach me some of the ways of rectitude which you have been taught? He, the great man, said, Yes, 
but while keeping company with me, you will never be able to bear and keep company with me in patience. And how can you have patience about things the knowledge of which you do not comprehend? Moses said, You will find me patient, God willing, and I shall not disobey you in any manner. He, the great man, said, Well, if you would follow me, mind that you shall ask me no question about anything unless I myself broach the subject to you. So both of them set out until when they embarked in a boat, he scuttled it. Thereupon Moses said, Have you scuttled it, that you may drown its occupants? It is indeed a strangely grievous thing you have done. He replied, Did I not say that you would not be able to bear with me and keep company with me patiently? Moses said, Do not take me to task for what I forgot. Do not be too hard on me for this lapse of mine. Then they both set out again, till when they met a boy, he, the great man, slew him. At this Moses said, Why have you slain an innocent person without his having slain anyone? Most certainly it is a strangely wondrous act you have committed. He, the great divine being, said, Did I not tell you that you would not certainly be able to bear with me patiently? Moses said, If I question you about anything after this, keep me in your company no more, for in that case you shall have reached the extent of being excused by me. I shall have no excuse to offer. So both of them again set out till when they came upon the inhabitants of a town, they asked them for food, but they refused to entertain them as guests. Then they found therein a wall which was on the point of falling down, and he, the divine being, repaired it. Moses said, If you had wanted, you could have charged for it. The divine being thereupon said, This is the parting of the ways between me and you. Now I shall tell you the significance of that with which you could not have patience. As for the boat, it belonged to certain poor people who worked on the river, and in their rear there was a brutal king who seized every good boat by force. So I chose to damage it. And as for the boy, his parents were believers, and we feared that he should involve them in trouble through transgression and disbelief. So we desired that their Lord should give them in his place a child superior to him in virtue and purity, and more regardful to attend to the right of relationships. As for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys of the town, and under this wall there was a treasure belonging to them, and their father had been a righteous man. So your Lord desired that they should attain their age of full strength, and then take out their treasure a mercy from your Lord, and I did not do it of my own accord. Whatever I did was the will of the Lord. This is the significance of that which you were not able to bear with patience. And they ask you about Zul Karnain, Cyrus of Persia. Say, I will just recite to you some of his account. Verily, we granted him authority on the earth, and provided him with all sorts of means. Then it so happened that he launched out on a particular course, so that when he reached the land of the setting of the sun, he found it disappearing as if in a vast muddy pool of murky water, and close to it he found a certain people. We said, Zul Karnain. You may either punish them or treat them with kindness. He said, Well, as for him who transgresses and does wrong, we shall certainly punish him. Then will he be produced before his Lord, who will inflict upon him a dreadful punishment. But as for him who submits 
and believes and acts righteously, there is for him a handsome reward with his Lord, and we shall speak to him easy words of our command. Then he launched out on another course, so that when he reached the land of the rising of the sun, he found it rising on a people for whom he had provided no shelter against it. That is how it was. As for him, we alone had full knowledge of all that he had with him. Then he launched out onto yet another course, so that when he reached a place between two barriers, he found in their vicinity a people who could hardly understand speech. They said, Dhul Karnain, Gog and Magog are playing havoc in this country. Shall we pay you tribute on condition that you set up a barrier between us and them? He said, The power which my Lord has endowed me with about this is better than your tribute. You only help me with your resources and human endeavor of physical strength. I will raise a rampart between you and them. Then he said, Bring me ingots of iron, so that when all was provided for, and he had filled the space between the two barriers, he said, Now blow with your bellows. They blew till when he had made it red-hot as fire, he said, Bring me molten copper that I may pour it thereon. So there was built the rampart which they, Gog and Magog, could neither scale, nor they had the strength to cause a breach through it. He said thereupon, This rampart signifies a great mercy of my lord. But when the promise of my Lord about the spread of the tentacles of Gog and Magog all over the world shall come to pass, he will raise it to the ground, crumbling it to pieces. And the promise of my Lord is certainly true. And we shall leave them, Gog and Magog, alone, at that time surging as waves and furious attacks, one over another. And the trumpet shall be blown. Then shall we gather them all together, and we shall, in a way, present hell on that day, face to face to the disbelievers. Those of them whose eyes were under a cover not heeding my reminder, and they could not even afford to hear to the voice of truth. Do those disbelievers think, even then, that they can take my servants as patrons to my exclusion? Let them know, surely we have prepared Jehenna for the disbelievers as an entertainment. Say, shall we inform you of those whose deeds shall spell their utter loss? They are those whose efforts are all lost in pursuit of things relating to the life of this world. Yet they think they are doing works of good manufacturing. It is these who disbelieve in and deny the messages of Allah and the meeting with him. So their deeds have gone vain, and on the day of resurrection we shall assign them no weight. That is their recompense, Jehenna. Because they disbelieved, and they looked down upon my signs and my messengers. Those who believe and do deeds of righteousness, will have gardens of paradise for an entertainment and an abode, wherein they shall abide for ever, having no desire to be removed from there. Say, if every ocean became ink for recording the words and creation of my Lord, surely the oceans would be spent up before the words and creation of my Lord came to an end. Even if we brought to add therewith as many more oceans. Say, I am but a human being like you. It has been revealed to me that your God is only one God. So let him who hopes to meet his Lord do deeds of righteousness, and let him associate no one in the worship of his Lord.